Frida Kahlo was incredibly skilled at telling stories in her artwork. Today when we look at her work, we think about maybe her self-portraits, probably quite a few monkeys and flowers. She's able to connect with the viewers of her art with a story. Frida Kahlo grew up in Mexico during the Mexican Revolution of 1910 to 1920. In that period, she saw a lot of transformation in Mexico, and that had a major effect on her life in many ways, including what kind of schooling she was able to access as a young child and an adolescent, and then also how she saw herself as an artist in her later life representing Mexico. When we're looking at Kahlo's artwork, we're often watching her process of figuring out her identity and expressing it to others. She was meticulously intentional about the kind of symbolism that she included in her artwork. As a child and a young adult, she was enamored with the philosophy of alchemy and stories from Aztec mythology. She was also raised by a Catholic mother and presumably spent a lot of time in churches in Catholic Mexico, although as an adult, she identified herself as atheist. One of the most important aspects of Frida Kahlo's personal identity and what she used to inform her artwork and to distinguish herself as an artist was as a Mexican national. Emerging from war in 1920, Mexico as a nation worked hard to distinguish itself specifically from Europe and Spain and the United States. It worked to achieve this through identifying itself with its indigenous cultures. For Frida Kahlo, Mexican folk art was a really significant way to display a strong Mexican identity and heritage. She famously collected hundreds or maybe even thousands of retablo paintings in her own home in Coyoacan. Retablo paintings are traditionally Catholic religious images that would depict saints and religious figures and occupy the space behind an altar. In the 1870s, Mexican folk artists took the concept and the structure of retablo paintings and created folk art that would adorn domestic homes rather than churches. And these new concepts of retablos would also depict everyday people and personal experiences rather than just religious figures and saints. These domestic retablo paintings would depict personal experiences of struggle or tragedies that had been overcome and they were meant as an expression of gratitude to religious figures for their intercession. And so in these folk art versions of retablo paintings, we often have the scene split up into thirds vertically, where the bottom third is sort of a scroll that has text written about what's in the middle third, the main scene. And then the top third is a space reserved for a saint or an angel or some other sort of religious figure interceding onto that middle scene. Frida Kahlo, being atheist, like I said, was specifically non-religious in her use of retablo painting, but she did take that general structure and the idea of divinity and suffering all in one image and repurpose it for her own kind of storytelling. She also combined her version of retablo style painting with her earlier fascination with Aztec and alchemist symbolism and created her own visual language that would populate these images. In Kahlo's versions of retablo, we often see pretty harrowing graphic scenes of pain and suffering and even suicide and death. Like the folk art version, Kahlo's paintings of retablo are usually quite flat in maybe one point perspective or skewed perspective. They use bright colors and are really straightforward in their depiction. Kahlo uses small hints of symbols throughout her paintings to tell a story about what's happening, about the inner psychological experience of the situation, whether it be a death or the sense of betrayal. Sometimes the area for text that would traditionally be found in a folk art retablo style painting is left completely blank, itself being a comment on what can be said about what's being depicted. Most notably, in Kahlo's versions of retablo, there is no divine intervention. There is no religiosity at all included in the image. And that absence itself is a story. It's about how Frida saw no intervention in her own suffering and in the suffering of the people that she knew. Instead, she focuses on the physical details, the things that she could sense. She grounds herself 
and her subject and her viewers in the reality of the experience. What we can learn from Frida Kahlo's artwork using retablo style is how to create a narrative using a visual language that's our own. We can be inspired by the other visual languages around us, those from churches and religious organizations, those from mythology, but the language itself has to tell our story, our meanings, and hold our representations. In this journal practice, I'm gonna ask you to look a little deeper into yourself and perhaps practice a little bit of vulnerability. It can be uncomfortable and why not? Why not be a little bit uncomfortable? When we create something, it doesn't always have to be a super pleasant experience, but it can still be a really generative one. So to get us started for this, take a deep breath, be inside your body, maybe stretch out your arms, the little muscles that you're gonna be using, get your materials ready, and let's get started. This journal practice is about creating a personal visual language to tell a story through art. You can think of this as a creative meditation where you can choose how you enter into the process and how you respond to the prompts. For this practice, we'll look into our own memories for stories we can express through art. Think of a time when you have experienced struggle or pain. Where were you? What do you remember about your surroundings, the people, objects, and places that are part of your memory? What do you remember about the thoughts and feelings you had during this time? We typically don't like to think of these memories, and for some of us, the memories can be just as awful as reliving the experience all over again. There's incredible healing and humanizing power in expressing pain through art. It can be a way to connect with yourself and reach out to others. You also have the power to decide how you want to use this practice. If you want, you can make this practice about a memory that isn't so painful, or about fictional characters in the story you're creating. To start, select a blank page in your journal and create a chart that is two columns, one for objects and the other for feelings and thoughts. Divide those columns into three rows. The bottom row will be before, the middle row is during, and the top row is outcome. You'll use these columns and rows to think back on your experience. What happened before the experience? What were the circumstances and important details? What happened during and what was the ultimate outcome? How did you continue to live after this difficult experience? In each row, write or draw the objects, feelings, and thoughts you had during these different stages of the experience. Be open to what comes up. List colors that stood out to you, physical and emotional feelings, textures of objects you encountered, and thoughts that could be phrases or even pictures. In the experience I'm working through, I remembered visualizing myself drowning in pain. I felt slow and pushed down like I was underwater, so those are words I included in my before and during stages. Remember that this process is just for you. This doesn't have to be something you show someone else. This is a process where you can collect the visual elements of your own stories to make something personally meaningful. Next, move to another blank page in your journal. Here you'll sketch out your retablo style scene. Divide your scene into thirds vertically. Like in folk art retablos, the bottom third will be a place for you to write about the scene depicted. In the middle third, sketch your scene. I use pencil and start to lightly sketch with basic shapes that I then build on to create details. Remember to include some of the important objects and people in your scene from your list. Create emotion through body posture and facial expressions, but don't worry about drawing realistically. Simple drawings are effective when they can communicate emotion and experience. If drawing people is challenging, start off with stick figures to work out posture. Use a mirror and your own body to help yourself see how the head, neck, back, arms, and legs are positioned in the posture you want to draw. Then add shapes and details onto stick figures. Sketch lightly with a pencil so you can erase any lines you don't want to keep in your final image. In this process, nothing is a mistake because everything can be changed and adapted. In the top third of the scene, sketch your after image, the details and symbols of what living through the experience was like. In my experience, I felt like I had surfaced from my pain and instead of drowning, I learned to let go and float above what had kept me down. As you sketch, keep an eye on your list and look for symbols you can include in your composition that can represent feelings and experiences. 
When you've finished laying out the scene in pencil, you can go over your drawing with a dark ink pen, smoothing out lines you want to keep and ignoring lines you don't want. The ink helps clarify the scene for us so we can see more clearly the story we are telling. Inking is a commitment to the illustration, but again, not necessarily a permanent one. In an art journal, we can add and remove elements as we want, so we can make bold statements while knowing we always have the option to change. You can use an eraser to remove any other pencil lines that you don't want to be part of your final image. Some of those lines were guidelines for the composition or sketches to help form postures and objects. They serve a purpose and can be removed when that purpose is no longer needed. Now add color to your retablo style illustration. You can use whatever medium you prefer best or want more practice with. In my work, I'm using Americana Folk Art Craft Acrylic Paint because of its bright, flat colors that dry matte without the glossy sheen of other acrylics. I also like to use acrylics because of their opaque coverage. New layers of paint can cover up previous layers entirely, so I can still, even at this painting stage, make choices and changes as I need to. The use of color can be symbolic of the experience and emotions of your memory, just like objects and expressions. This is a chance to experiment with color theory. What colors represent emotions for you? How does adding and mixing colors change the feeling of your scene? You can also be representational in your color choice, choosing to depict the colors of the places and objects of your experience. In my example, I go back to the feeling of drowning and floating and surround my figures with blue to represent water as well as sadness. Outside of the blue, I chose to use several different colors to depict a sky at sunrise or sunset. I also have key colors that help identify different elements in my image. Black hair for me, black fur for my cat, pink for my yoga mat, and white for my window frame. Adding small details can also bring the image together, creating depth for the scene. Find special materials to include in your illustration, metallic paints, collage materials, photographs, or stickers. Make this image about your personal experience and perspective. After the paint has dried, I go back over my lines with a dark ink pen to keep my lines crisp and well-defined. I also went back over the blue area with a blue marker to create more details and more symbols of my experience. I'm quite proud of this work and having gone through this process of remembering a difficult experience and finding a way to visualize it with art. Although our stories and our pain are so different, I feel a relationship with Frida Kahlo and other artists through this expressive artistic practice. For me, making art demystifies the pain and helps me turn it into something beautiful. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this gives you something to work at and to challenge your own creativity and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.